All right, let's talk uh, some about this uh, about this ridiculous Joe Biden plan to cancel ten thousand dollars or more in student loans. Uh, it's absurd. It's ridiculous. It's indefensible. And let me lay out a bunch of different aspects. Let me start here. It's unconstitutional. Joe Biden doesn't have the right, with the stroke of a pen, to eliminate $300 billion in student loans. And by eliminate, I mean take the obligation from the student loan taker outer, right? The student who took the loan out, and put it onto the federal government. In other words, I shouldn't have to subsidize your loans. There are a lot of different reasons why this is unfair, and I'll get to those in a minute. But at its most basic level, Joe Biden doesn't have the constitutional authority to do this. Even Nancy Pelosi acknowledged this a way back. Crazily, the constitutional authority that Joe Biden is trying to use here, which is even more crazy and insane than what went on uh, when it came to the uh, to the uh, stu- the eviction moratorium that the CDC tried to implement, which I'll talk about in a minute, Biden is using a law that was passed after 9/11 that says debts can be canceled in connection with a war or other military operation or national emergency. Which emergency is Joe Biden citing? COVID-19. Uh, That's a Department of Education memo that was issued. This is absolutely insane. That's the legal authority he's trying to cite. This is why Democrats never want COVID to end. It's going to be struck down by the courts. And it's the problem is here, the timing is significant. They're going to put this out to try to juice their midterm uh, response from their voters. Young people who are dumb and don't understand basic constitutional issues. It will not be ruled on prior to the midterms, when it is ruled on post-midterms and is shut down uh, because the president doesn't have authority to do this without legislative action, when it is shut down, the Biden administration will blame uh, the Supreme Court and the Trump appointees for not allowing them to do away with uh, this $300 billion in student loans. And that they'll then run on 2024, making the same promise all over again, except saying that they need to have a larger majority because this is what the Supreme Court does to them. Okay, that's the next two years and how it's going to play out. Uh, Announce something that's clearly unconstitutional. Know that it's not going to be able to be challenged before the midterm. Get slapped down by the courts. Use it as a referendum for why you have to vote Democrat in 2024, whether Biden is the nominee or not. Again, this is how an intelligent media would discuss this issue. Instead, you're not going to hear most of that in the media. In fact, you're going to hear this referred to as a, uh, a, a, as a bailout, as a, uh, as a cancellation of student debt. It's not being canceled. The debt is there. It's just being shifted from the individual who took out the loans obligation to uh, the federal government. Now, why is this unfair? Okay, so it's unconstitutional. Biden knows it's unconstitutional. This is going to be similar to the CDC's eviction moratorium, uh, and it's going to be struck down by the courts, and the Biden White House is acting in an unconstitutional manner to try to buy time and score political points. Now, If this is such a great idea, and if Joe Biden truly wants to have this happen, here's an easy question that every media member should be asking him. Why didn't you introduce it at Congress in some point in the last two years? You have a Democrat majority in the Senate with Kamala Harris breaking the tie. You have a Democrat majority in the House. Why would you not? Why would you not take the opportunity to use this uh, opportunity with your Democrat majority to pass this bill. Why wouldn't you do it? It's pretty simple. It's pretty simple if you truly believe this is such a wildly popular move, then use your Democrat majority to pass this bill. You know why they didn't do it? Because it wouldn't have passed. Even a lot of Democrats disagree with this because it's transparently unfair. And what do I mean by transparently unfair? Most people don't go to college. 
Therefore, most people out there do not have college loans or certainly grad school loans, which is even more common. So you are forgiving, forgiving student loan debt by increasing the taxable obligations on many people who have been working since they were 17 or 18 years old and did not go off to college. So it's a subsidy for the more wealthy, but paid for oftentimes by uh, people who are not more wealthy, poor. Um, Also, I took out student loans. I paid them all off. Why don't I get a subsidy? Why doesn't a ton, why don't a ton of people out there who did the same get this same subsidy? What about all the people who made choices based on their college or grad schools based on not taking out student loans? What about all the people who worked a second or third job? What about the parents who chose not to spend their money but to save it instead to allow their kids to go to college with a lower indebted rate? Why are you benefiting people who made the choice to go and sign up for these loans and not forcing them to follow their own obligations and rewarding them? What about all the people who already paid their loans? What about all the people in the future who are still going to be taking it out? Why are we arbitrarily focusing on this tiny segment of the population? I'll tell you. Because... The overwhelming base of the Democrat Party is now college-educated voters. White college-educated voters are the heartbeat of the Democrat Party, in fact. And Joe Biden is effectively giving away $300 billion in bribes to his supporters to try to get them to be more likely to vote in the midterms and presumably in 2024 as well. Now, as if all of this was not unconstitutional, unfair... Also, it's wildly, and I mean wildly, awful decision in the midst of the highest inflation that we have seen in 40 years. By which I mean this. uh, This is from uh, Jason Furman, who was head of the Obama, Obama Council of Economic Advisors, pouring, this is a direct tweet that he sent out, pouring roughly half a trillion dollars of gasoline on the inflationary fire that is already burning is reckless. Doing it while going well beyond one campaign promise and breaking another, all proposals paid for, is even worse. It's reckless. You already have inflation. Joe Biden has spent trillions of unnecessary dollars since he became president of the United States. That has greatly contributed to inflation in this nation. So if it's unconstitutional, if it is unfair, and if it's also reckless, this triumvirate of failure should render Joe Biden's student loan plan dead on arrival. Both economically and politically, it is nonsensical. Again, Most in the media are not going to cover this in an intelligent fashion because they cheerlead, but I would encourage you to actually spend just a scintilla of time thinking about the economic aspects of this decision, unconstitutional, unfair, and reckless. It is a triumvirate of awful from Joe Biden, the man with the Bidas touch. Everything Joe Biden touches turns to crap time after time. 